I am procrastinating working on Bell's corset, so sure, why not cut out Gaston's frilly shirt? Does anybody else do that? I wanted to talk about two different things. Because I often get my patterns at estate sales, the very first thing that I do is I go ahead and if it appears that the pattern has been opened, I lay out my pattern pieces and iron them out and then place them in the numerical order that the instruction sheet is stating. And I did become aware that this is missing one piece, but I think I can still construct it without it. The second thing I want to state is just because a pattern says that it's making history, it does not mean that it's historically correct. This shirt traditionally would have had gussets in the underarm area, and this pattern piece is just your basic modern shirt with sleeve. So I'm going to get it pinned up. I had found these black boots that I thought would work well for my husband to wear as Gaston. Now Gaston's boots are traditional 18th century Regent Sierra boots in that they have a tan leather strip up at the top. So my friend Michelle had some extra pleather and I just took the complete circumference of the boot top and I determined that to cover that section I would need a piece that was 24 inches in length. And then I wanted about a 4 inch cuff which I also wanted four inches that I would then tuck inside. So almost like a pleather sandwich. And so for that, I opted to cut it at 10 inches tall because then I wanted to hem it on either side a half inch. So Next, now that I have both of these ends hemmed, I'm going to join the ends together, creating basically just a tube. Okay, so this is how the boot looks now. You can see that I just put the seam on the side where the zipper is and basically just tucked in that extra fabric. So he will put this on his leg first and then tuck it into the boot and then flip it down. So, and it just, it just pops off. So if we need black boots, um, we still have black boots, but it just gives a few more options. For Belle's bodice, uh, my first mock-up, I cut in the size to fit my son's girlfriend because, you know, it's, it's good if you can make a wearable mock-up for someone. And I did everything sewing-wise based on the directions from the pattern maker. And two of the things that I really didn't care for is they recommended um, leaving one of the sides raw and then just zigzag and attach it that way, which then it, it, it just doesn't lay the best that it could. So, plus I, I didn't really care for the look of that. And it was the same thing for the little area where the other side of the grommets go. 
Um, they also constructed it in a way that was a little bit interesting. So for my bell corset, I joined all of the lining pieces together because I'm going to bag line it. That way you're not fighting to turn out the corset in the side seams here and having to stitch them out. It, in the long run, I think it'll just be easier. And then what I did for that front piece is I went ahead and I sewed it inside out and then flipped it and then right here at the bottom, I left about a three inch hole where I was able to turn the fabric out. And then I just hand stitched it close. So I don't even really think you can see it too much. Maybe a stitch here or there. And then the same thing with this grommet piece. And then for the red insert, I'm going to go ahead and sew it here so that it'll be attached. And then I'm going to attach the lining to the exterior fabric. And once I get to that point, I will show you. But I just kind of wanted to show you that there are always more than one way generally that you can construct a garment. And sometimes you might have a way that you prefer better. All right, I have the lining pinned to the exterior fabric and I have a green pin indicating where I am going to start sewing. And I leave enough space where the red pin is that that's where my hand is going to go through to flip out the fabric once it's all sewn. So I'm going to start at the green, come up, around the arms, the upper tabs, around the neckline, down again. So that's going to be my sewing line. And then I'm going to turn it inside out through this access point. The attached item end pieces that were on this end and this end I've tucked in and that's why it's a little bit fluffy because I've sort of pinned it in place to make sure that when I'm doing my half inch seam allowance I don't accidentally sew those end pieces. So I have Belle's bodice lining attached to the exterior fabric and I just wanted to share with you before I flip it inside out, I cut off the excess material so that can make a crisp corner. Uh, sometimes if you leave the full fabric width, once you turn it out, it gets a little bit bulky. So you can kind of see that I've just trimmed it out. And also, I'm gonna try and get in here. Around the curve, I just kind of clip about every inch or so. And again, that will help the garment to lay more smoothly. So now I'm gonna have the battle with fabric to get it turned out. Stay tuned. All right, so I have the lining all flipped out now. I did iron everything flat and then I have gone ahead and I've measured and somewhat marked it. It's kind of hard to see but there is a black sharpie dot and again this is where the grommet is gonna go. Sewing sidekick! Okay the bodice, the vest, the corset, whatever you want to call it, has now been flipped out. The bottom access area, I just hand stitched that closed. 
and then where the grommets are going to go, um, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little black sharpie mark. I also have some pins. Um, the grommet will go in the center, and there needs to be one there, and one there, and there, and there, and then along here. So all together, um, 12, 14, 16 grommets. Good times. I just set all of the grommets. This was my first time attempting to do grommets and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. So I used a wooden cutting board, a rubber mallet, an awl, and that makes the holes in the fabric. And then I had first gone to Hobby Lobby to get some eyelets, but this kit has just, let's see if it's gonna, there, can we see? This kit has just the upper eyelet. So then I went over to Marshall's and this kit has the upper eyelet. Come on, focus, 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 focus. Not gonna focus. You can see it's a little bit wider. Plus the back washer, which is thinner. So I'm not sure what Hobby Lobby is expecting you to do with these, because you absolutely do need this set to create a grommet because the wider grommet goes through the fabric and then you have what I used is you then back it with the flat washer, position it over the little die which let's see there's a little ridge that it kind of sets inside there and so you just kind of do you position it you then have the second part of the die which is also has a groove on top put that and then smack it with the mallet a good couple of times now it should be noted that because these are very small pieces and the awl is incredibly sharp that if you have children please be careful. Um, I did make the blood sacrifice on this corset because my hand slipped and I ended up catching myself with the awl. So do take care. Whenever you're attempting a cosplay, I think the details make the difference. And so in looking closely at Belle's accessories, I notice she does not wear earrings, but she does have a leather necklace. So my friend Michelle does a lot of costuming and she had a spool of leather that she graciously said that I could borrow a few strands from. You can also use a leather shoelace and to make it you'll need some two jewelry pliers and some sort of medallion for the bottom of the necklace. Belle's um, pendant medallion is circular in nature. And then you'll just need a few crimps, a jump ring, and then of course, this is a lobster claw that's a closure and scissors to cut the leather strap. And so you'll need to kind of measure on yourself, but this piece of leather on me is 16 inches long because again the top of it sits at the hollow of her neck 
and then hangs down about three inches. So because everyone has different size necks, um, this will be different sizes. But again, this leather strap is 16 inches, and then this one was 20 inches long. And so I just attached the medallion with one hoop ring and made a loop that it can actually slide up and down the necklace and crimped it down. And then there's a crimp on either end to hold the leather strap, two jump rings, and then the lobster claw. It really didn't take very long to make, um, maybe five minutes. There must be more than this provincial life. Just watch, I'm going to make Belle my wife. Sewing so helper. She's going to go lay right there. I hope you have enjoyed this year's Halloween extravaganza. If so, please give the video a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. All the patterns and other details can be found on my website and it is linked below in the description box. Next week my daughter will be modeling the dress that I have created for Gunny Sacks Halloween. So be sure to come back. Thank you for watching.